Super Orion may be the big name for Atlantis, but fear not all you waifu lovers, because behind every great husbando is a great grandma. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, with a servant spotlight for Caldeo's foxy grandma and local mecha enthusiast Europa. We'll be examining her stats and skills, as well as going over pointers on how to utilize her effectively, and an overall grade comparing her to how she stacks up to the other 5 star servants. So if you're ready for some freshly baked cookies and head pats, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and ring my bell so that you can catch all of these spotlight videos as they go up and you can help out the channel. But for now, onto Europa stats. Europa has a max HP of 12,571 and a max attack of 11,737. Europa's attack is fairly high for her class, but in exchange she has the lowest HP among all 5 star riders. Compared to the rest of the 5 star servants, she still sports a higher than average attack stat, however her HP ranks near the bottom for her rarity. When it comes to her command cards, Europa has 3 hits on her quick card, 3 hits on her arts, 1 hit on her buster, and 5 hits on her extra card. She has an NP gain rate of 0.58% and a star rate of 8.9%. Europa has the prototypical glass cannon stat spread, with most of her stats focused on attack, with very little left for HP. Europa also benefits from relatively good NP gain, but very poor star generating due to her deck structure and low hit counts. Moving on to her skills, Europa's first skill is Princess of Purity rank B. This skill grants her invincibility for 3 attacks, and also increases her debuff resistance for 3 times between 50 and 100% depending on level. Her second skill is Affection of the Chief God rank A+. This skill increases her Art and Buster card effectiveness for 3 turns between 20 and 30%, and it also charges her NP gauge between 20 and 30%, all depending on level. And finally, her last skill is White Bull of the Chief God rank C. This skill has a 60% chance to inflict charm on all enemies for one turn, and it also reduces their defense for three turns between 10 and 20%, and reduces their critical attack chance for three turns between 10 and 20%, both depending on level. For her passives, Europa has Magic Resistance rank C, which increases her debuff resist by 15%, Riding rank A+, which increases her quick heart effectiveness by 11%, and Divinity rank C, which increases her damage by 150. As for her deck and Noble Phantasm, Europa has a Buster Arts deck with Quick Arts Arts Buster Buster and a Buster Noble Phantasm. Her Noble Phantasm is Sefiri Totalos. It's an AoE Buster attack that increases her own defense for 50% for one turn, and deals damage to all enemies with between a 300 and 500% damage modifier depending on level. It also increases Europa's Buster card effectiveness for one turn between 20 and 40% depending on overcharge. Being the goddess that she is, Europa is really fond of gold, specifically gold mats. For level ascension, she needs 9 Yadrissal Seeds, 4 Spirit Roots, 9 Reactor Cords, and 5 Star Shards. Yadrissal Seeds are farmable at Fallen Babylonia in Babylonia with a 49% drop rate, Spirit Roots have a 12% drop rate at the Holy City in Camelot, Reactor Cores drop at the Prison Camp in Lost Belt 3 with a 20% drop rate, and Star Shards are a new mat that will be farmable at the Nemesis Islands in Atlantis where they have a 12% drop rate. For skill leveling, she's going to need 6 Spirit Roots, 18 Yadrissal Seeds, 24 Tiaras, and 10 Star shards per skill. Tiaras are another new Lost Belt 5 mat that can be farmed at the Thanatos Islands where they have a 38% drop rate. You know, when we started this YouTube channel, I never imagined that I'd be doing a video about a sexy grandma who rides a giant bull and literally summons Big O to punch people into another dimension. And yet, here we are. Isn't FGO great? But Europa offers more than just a creative concept design, she's also packing some major assets and by that, I mean her stats of course. She has relatively high attack for her class, as well as some pretty decent NP gain. And while her HP may seem low at first glance, she is surprisingly tanky, due in large part to her first skill, Princess of Purity. It grants her invincibility for 3 hits, and increases her debuff resist by 100% for 3 times. So basically this skill functions as an even better protection from arrows. The cooldown may be slightly longer, but in return Europa receives protection from almost anything thanks to invincibility, and virtual immunity to all debuffs. Both of these are extremely strong effects to have, especially in late game content, since it not only allows Europa to tank through multiple enemy noble phantasms, but also allows her to negate debuffs, and debuffs are king of the late game. So while Princess of Purity provides Europa with all the defense that she needs, her next skill, Affection of the Chief God, provides her with a good offensive tool by boosting her arts and buster card effectiveness, 
and also charging her NP gauge. Dual card buffs are great to have because they give great return on investment. Since Arts and Buster cards make up nearly the entirety of Europa's deck, she benefits from this buff with almost every attack. And 30% isn't that low of a buff either. It especially helps her out with her NP gain on her Arts cards. And since her attack stat is already high as it is, she can deliver some surprisingly strong Buster crits as well. But the NP charge is probably the best part of this skill because the 30% charge is very good and it allows Europa to get off an early quick Noble Phantasm for some wave clearing or even just to deal additional damage in Brave Chains. This NP charge combined with the Arch buff though gives Europa a deceptively good NP gain and she can oftentimes Noble Phantasm multiple times with the right team comp. Finally, Europa's last skill, White Bull of the Chief God, is her utility tool. It has a low chance to charm all enemies as well as lower their defense and reduce their crit chance. The charm is a nice effect to have since it could potentially be an AoE stun, but because her success chance is so low, it unfortunately isn't reliable. The defense down and crit down on the other hand are a lot better, especially since that 20% defense debuff is basically akin to a charisma for the party. It helps boost the party's DPS, which is always a good thing. What isn't a good thing though is that ridiculous 7 turn cooldown, which really holds the skill back from being effective and consistent. So for skill priority, level the card buff first since it's her most powerful offensive tool, and and it helps her NP easier, followed by the charm for just a little bit of extra damage, and then the invincibility last since it doesn't really scale that much with levels. For her append skills, mana loading should be the go-to since it gives Europa an initial 50% NP charge when combined with her second skill, followed by the extra card damage, and then you can take the anti-ruler skill last since it does give Europa a bit of a nice niche if you don't have an Avenger. Europa's NP is an AoE buster attack that increases her Buster card effectiveness for a turn and also increases her defense by 50%. This is an interesting set of effects for a Noble Phantasm to have, and it really captures Europa's playstyle perfectly. Aggressive, but also tanky. Defensively, a 50% defense buff is gigantic, and when you pair it with other defensive buffers like Mosh, it means that Europa can effectively negate almost all damage for a turn, even from enemy Noble Phantasms. And that's on top of her 3 hit invincibility. However, you'll mostly use this Noble Phantasm offensively, and in that regard, it still works surprisingly well. The additional buster buff stacks with her second skill to effectively give her a mana burst on her NP, so it does hit hard and Europa can actually do some very good damage for an AoE servant. Europa is a very unique servant in the sense that she feels like an all round that can somehow be both very tanky and very powerful whenever you need her to be. Because she has so much defensive utility, she doesn't really need any help staying alive. And in fact, she'll likely outlast most supports just because of how much protection Princess of Purity gives her. On the offensive side of things, she has enough buffs in her kit and enough NP gain to be a stable and consistent source of damage all on her own. The fact that she's a rider also helps her offensively because it gives her tremendous star weight, which allows her to crit much more often than other servants. So Europa is self-sufficient with good damage, good survivability, and good wave clear. What could possibly be the issue? Well, unfortunately, Europa's one major issue is the same one that plagues most other all-rounder servants, and that is a lack of a niche. Europa doesn't specialize in anything, and for the most part, she's a selfish attacker, so she can't even play the semi-support role that effectively. She has good damage, but it doesn't come close to approaching the juggernauts of her class like Ozymandias, Quetzalcoatl, or Ivan, and she has good NP gain, but she can't use it to farm as effectively as Da Vinci Lily or the other arch riders, and she definitely doesn't have as much utility as riders like Rhaenys and Achilles. So you Europa occupies this really weird spot where she's competent at everything, but excels at nothing. And that just makes her feel like an extra body that's just there to fill a slot on the team. As I mentioned though, Europa is self-sufficient, so she can get the job done on pretty much any team comp. And given her offensive skill set, she tends to work best when supported by servants who can either buff her attack and charge her NP gauge, or by servants who can generate crit stars and buff crit damage. 
For an NP-focused build, go with supports like Shakespeare, Rainus, or Helena. All three provide Europa with direct NP charge, as well as buffs to her NP damage. Typically, Rainus isn't the best support to use for servants who can crit due to her tendency to steal stars. But if you aren't going for a crit-centric build on Europa, that downside doesn't really matter that much. However, if you are going for a crit-centered build on her, then I recommend pairing her with servants like Santa Nightingale, Ruler Artoria, or Chiron. Chiron is a great buffer who can also buff card damage for Europa, which makes her burst damage much more devastating. Ruler Artoria is another naturally tanky servant who can provide good crit buffs in tough battles. And while Nightingale's crit buffs aren't as strong as the other two, she more than makes up for that with her star generating and strong defensive utility. Europa's Bond CE is White Bull. It increases the party's arts and buster card effectiveness by 10%. Europa isn't a support, so this isn't really worth using. Instead, go for CEs that buff arts and buster cards or NP damage, like Battle Olympia, Afternoon in the Citadel, or Black Grail. Given Europa's tankiness, the demerit on Black Grail doesn't hurt her too much. As for her crit build, go with CEs that can buff crit damage, as well as either generate stars or buff her cards, like Sweet Days, Sailor in White, or Joint Recital. In the future, I do recommend being on the lookout for Mystery Treasure. It's a good all-purpose free-to-play craft essence for Europa that buffs her Arts and Buster cards, as well as her crit damage, and even gives starting NP charge. For command codes, I do recommend any Buster or Arts crit buffing code like Mistress of Heaven or Gakyo no Fude. Overall, Europa suffers from a lack of excellence. She has a lot of good upsides like her NP charge and high attack, which allow her to be a good wave clearer, her very strong defensive utility, which makes her surprisingly tanky, and most of all, her self-sufficiency since she doesn't need to rely on any support and can pretty much just slide onto a wide variety of teams to provide additional firepower. However, she also has a couple of significant drawbacks. Her cooldowns are a bit longer than average, especially on her third skill, and she simply doesn't excel in any area. She doesn't have a niche or anything much to offer the team, so she gets a B from me. In a vacuum, Europa can be a strong servant. She has good attacking power and very good defense. And in fact, if you are a newer player or someone who does lack strong riders, then Europa can be a very solid and reliable pickup that you can build around since she's so easy to use. But because she's majorly outclassed by nearly every other rider in some area or another, she feels very underwhelming. And unfortunately, Europa falls into the Jack of All Trades, Master of None category. And those are my thoughts on Europa. It's worth mentioning that she will be available as an option from the 5 star ticket next year, so if you really like her but you don't want to roll, then I recommend just waiting it out and picking her up next year, which is what I'm going to be doing. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing if you really enjoyed the video. Join the party over in our Discord, chill with us on Twitch, and follow us on Twitter. And I'll see you all in the next Servant Spotlight. So Brony out, later.